Blog Talk Radio. Sit back, relax. You're about to hear the best, most up to the minute information on LaSalle High School sports and activities. This is Lancer Line on WLSN and the LaSalle Broadcasting Network. Huseman's Premier Insurance Agency has been serving the personal and business insurance needs of Ohio since 1975. They make sure that you are covered today and in the future for your auto, home, motorcycle, or boat insurance so that you can focus on what's important to you and your family. They represent some of the finest insurance companies in the industry, providing excellent customer service as well as a reputation for fast and fair claims assistance. They will find the best company for your specific needs and give you the highest level of protection. Contact Huseman Schmidt for all of your insurance needs at 513-521-8590 or at www.huesmanschmidt.com. Spare Co. and WLSN Radio, the worldwide leader in high school sports, for an abbreviated version of Lancer Line, and it's my pleasure to uh, it bring to you the head coach of the LaSalle Lancers, Coach Tom Grippa. And Coach Grippa, my first question is, uh, how do we get you pulled away from uh, the Bachelorette or one of those shows on TV tonight? <laughs> I'm, I'm working on my uh, call sheet for tomorrow and our four-way scrimmage and watching the Reds. Doesn't well, get any better than that, Barrett. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you and I share the passion of baseball. There's no doubt about that. But uh, I, I want to get right to it because I don't want to take up all your time tonight. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's you or if it's if you agree with me, or but in the last week, I sense the the interest level of football around Greater Cincinnati get a little elevated. I don't know if it's two a day starting up. You know, the preseason polls are coming out. Are you feeling that too a little bit? Yes, I am. Um, I know now we're we're ready to go, and you know we're kind of tired of of you know being in shorts and going against ourselves. We're really anxious to go against another opponent, and so. You know, we know that the season's right around the corner. You know, we, now we do have some work to get done, and, and and still some players to get evaluated and 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 try to improve each day. Have some kids improve to, you know, help our team. Uh, that's going to be important in the next two weeks. But you know, starting tomorrow, we have uh, some great tests coming up for our kids and our football team, and uh, we're going to Mason for a four-way. We're in. Uh, Three other teams in it are Mason, Northmont, and Winton Woods. All uh, deep, real good programs, real solid football programs. And then, and then Friday we scrimmage Middletown, and, and they're one of the top teams in Cincinnati. And then the following week we scrimmage Centerville, and they're they're one of the top teams in Dayton. So, I think we have a pretty good idea of what kind of football team we'll have. You know, after. After all this. And for those that might be listening to the broadcast tonight, a uh, venue change, if I'm not mistaken, for that Middletown game originally planned. You guys were heading up 75 to Middletown. Uh, for whatever reason, that's changed. They're coming down to uh, uh, it, You know State. what, uh, Barrett? We, we are now st- we're going to go back to Middletown. Oh, the so issue back, from yeah. Middletown, yes, yeah, back in Middletown. Troy called me on Saturday and said, would it be possible to come to LaSalle? He goes, I'll get back with you on Monday. So I just gave my parents a heads up that, that could happen, and the issue is, see, Barnett's Field, where they play, is a grass field, and the issue is the you know, heat stress on the grass and lack of water. They probably have a sprinkling system, but it's still, uh, you know, it's it's been such a dry summer that they probably were worried about it, and uh, Troy Everhart called today and said, look, our AD said he thinks it'll be okay, so we're going to just come up to Middletown. So I said, okay. Troy's, cool. a great football, uh, Troy's a great football coach. This isn't an indictment on him, but 30 years ago, would you have a coach worried about the uh, the integrity of his, his natural grass? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. No, the times so, have changed. This has been kind of a fun uh, preseason to watch. Uh, training camp, you might say, at the high school level. A lot of things to kind of look out for. Of course, you got Furcart throwing the ball, uh, leading your Lancers. Uh, before we go any further, you told me an interesting stat today, which really, uh, or earlier, perhaps yesterday, that uh, to me was very interesting, that 
And, and uh, in fact, I'll just let you uh, advise because I'll mess it up. But it's it's got to do with senior leadership from the quarterback position. Talk about that and uh, your history behind that. Well, I've been a head coach for 25 years, and the worst record I've had when I have a senior quarterback start the season, finish the season, not get injured, not get benched, is seven and three. So that's a critical that's a critical stat. You know, even at LaSalle, the Tyler Sheehan. And he did get injured, but you know he went eight and two in oh five um we We had a very good football team in oh four but Anthony Coomer broke his wrist, and he was a senior quarterback at the start of the season and 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 didn't he he missed two and a half weeks you know so if if I can have that guy stay healthy and um uh, not get benched, meaning he's doing the job. He he's running the offense. He's making good decisions. He's he's achieving our standard of performance for our quarterback position. And we talk about that a lot. Is that you, there's a standard of performance that you have to achieve as a player. And the GCL is an all star league. All the teams have all stars playing at the different positions. You know, when when parents come up to me, Barrett, and say, well, you know, why is my son playing? You know. My, that's one of the things I throw right back at him. Hey, listen, could he start at Mahler, X, or Elder? If they say no, well, then there's your answer. You know, we're an all-star league, and we need all-stars too, you know, if we're going to play with these teams. And so if I have a quarterback that starts the season, finishes the season, and he's playing at the standard performance expected of our seniors in our quarterback position, the worst record's been seven and three. So last year Dominic Capano came in at seven and three, even though Dom did miss a game. Um, so we're we're hopeful. Brad's had a good camp. He's he's made mistakes, but they're mistakes he needs to make for him to to learn how to quarterback. And Let me ask you this, Coach. With him quarterback, you know, for those that might not be aware, he had baseball commitments, summer baseball commitments. Was there perhaps a, a little more challenge, uh, a challenging moment in the beginning of camp for him to get caught up with? Because uh, he's never quarterback before for the Lancers. Was that kind of a setback? Is he caught up to where he should be? And how, and how much time did he miss? He missed some time. Uh, is, there a, is it a setback? Uh, yes and no. Uh the biggest setback, to be honest, Barrett, is he, you know, Brad's a great baseball player. He he's signed to go to, to play baseball at the University of Dayton on a baseball scholarship. We're proud of him for, for achieving that, and uh, it's a big weight off his shoulders, you know, knowing that he has a, a good chunk of his college education paid for uh, via baseball. And but he uh, pulled his hamstring pretty bad, and so he's been kind of limited. In running, so uh, you know one of Brad's strengths as a quarterback is his running skill because Brad's a running back. I mean, he's going to line up at quarterback Barrett number twenty-four. That'd be kind of fun. That hasn't happened in a while. Now, I was wondering you know, if he's going to change that number at all. No, I don't think he should. I told him you'll be Doug Flutie. If he plays <laughs> like Doug Flutie, we'll take that, right? Absolutely. The I Brad's tell you, good Doug, camp, Doug, and Doug we can't Flutie. wait. Where is he? Is he where's he at now? He's probably still playing up in the arena league, I think. But uh, <laughs> no, coach, I wanna, he works for ESPN. I want to talk to you about some guys. I asked you this earlier, and 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 it's interesting to find out the guys that worked hard in the off season. I asked you earlier today, you know, who are some of the most improved players from last year's perhaps JV team or varsity team? Some guys that stuck out in your head. Yeah, you mentioned Debo. Uh, Debo is a name that I think we're going to hear a lot about this year. He's the nose guard for the Lancers. Uh, Devon, Devon uh, Brown Norris again goes by Debo. Talk a little bit about him if you could. And the uh, the impression Debo he made is on you. Uh, six foot. He's two hundred and sixty five pounds. He he looks the part of a defensive lineman, and uh, we can't block him. Our offensive line can't block Debo. So we just as time just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep plowing in there and disrupting the timing of the offensive backfield. And he's done that to our offense. So. We want him to keep doing it. He's also playing some backup uh, guard. Uh, but he'll start every down at nose guard, and, and I think he'll be really good at, at nose guard this year. And he, he's been a pleasant surprise. And um, and then on the the defense has quite a few guys returning. So, you know, it's it, 
the surprises aren't there as much. Lemuel Wires a returning all GCL player. Jaleel was a second team all GCL and he's an outstanding player. Nate Sparks was second team all GCL. And uh Jen Christian's a returning starter. What about and, what about and, these guys? I mean, everybody knows about Derek Keith on the offensive side of the ball. Two guys on the offense and, uh, Brandon Walsh are, yeah. and, and yeah, Brandon Walsh and uh, Eric Tolkey. You throw Jason Bell into the mix at uh, at tailback, and then you got uh, Gage Weathorn, the offensive line. That that's that's if you're going to have guys with a lot of improvement, uh, offensive line somewhere you'd like to see it for sure. And in the running back position, his uh, his Jason yeah, that's, Bell. That's exactly himself. right. Yeah, he's got competition. Uh, Morgan Wilcox and and uh, Kevin Ferguson. Morgan's a junior, and Kevin's a sophomore. They're they're very good backs. It'll be a three headed monster there at the, in the running back. Now the two positions, there'll be three guys manning that spot, and or you know two guys man, three guys manning manning those two spots. And do, let me ask you, then, coach, do those guys? You got Wilcox and those guys. Do they? Uh, do you have a short, da- a short down back? Do you have a guy that uh, you know has got better in uh, long, Wilcox long yardage will be situation? The short yardage back, yeah. Wilcox is very strong and powerful. He's the strongest kid on the football team. And uh, he's one of the strongest players I've ever coached. He's really a beast in the weight room. He has a 350 bench, and uh, he had a he's got a 500 pound, uh, it's a 600 pound squat, and a 700 pound deadlift. He's a, he's a really powerful kid. He's about 5'10", 210, 215, and and, and um, you know all muscle. He's he's very powerful, and strong, and and he's, and he's He's playing good. I mean, he's he's a he he'll be used as a blocking back, but he'll also carry the football. You know, and my kids all know Barrett that no one guy is gonna in, in this spread offense. Sharing the ball is part of the gig. You have to buy into sharing the ball. Not one guy is going to have you know twenty five carries and and rush for twelve hundred yards. You know, we we had that a few years ago with Kendall Owens, but in this team, you know, all three of those guys will have, um, t- together they'll have that thousand yard mark, you know, but no one kid's going to have a lot more yards than the other kid, you know, they'll all have their big games, um, so we'll see how it fans out, and Brad's a runner, so Brad will get his rushing yards, and same thing at receiver, you know, Keith's our, our top guy, and he'll, he'll probably lead the team in catches, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, Walsh is right there on his heels, you know, in, in receptions. And um, Bell and Ferguson can catch. They'll have a bunch of receptions together. Um, we've been showing that we're really good at the screen game, so Wilcox will get some catches. And Eric Tolke out of flanker position, he's he's been real steady. He's got outstanding hands. He's a very similar player to Mike Berniker, you know, and Mike was a good little athlete out there that made, made tough catches and just had a knack for getting open, and that's Eric Tolke. So, um I think we'll have great balance. Uh Keith's our Keith's our money man. He's our he's our go to guy, but if you double team Keith and take him out of the mix, then you know, we'll hurt you with those other kids and, and, and Derek knows that. He knows and Derek's unselfish. He he has no problem with that. And then you throw Isaiah Fuller in there and that gives us a bunch of skilled guys, you know. We like to use the term we have a lot of bullets in our gun. We just gotta we just gotta have three seconds to get the ball out. And if we get that we're in business. Flipping to the defensive side of the football, you've been doing this as uh, long as Moby Dick's been a minnow. Have you ever had a defense or even seen a defense at the high school level with as much speed as your LaSalle answer defense this year? It's just one of the fastest. Yeah, now I've had some fast defenses, but this is one of the fastest. We we, we uh, would be very formidable in a, in a track race, you know, lined up and um, – but it's about playing football, and uh, that's what that's what Lou and and Gus Doros and Brian Hydron that's their job is to get these guys to play football. And and uh, you know it is harder today in today's world, Barrett. It's teams are it's it's easier to score points than it was even back when you played. It was you know there were a lot more shutouts back then, or a lot more games where you know the score was seventeen fourteen and today's world it's it's more like you know 27 21 you know just because the you know I, i've said this to my coaches if i came out and ran three bubble screens in a row i would think we got a pretty good chance to pick up 10 yards you know and i probably don't call bubble screen enough but 
you know, in today's world, you, you spread the ball and get it out in space, and you don't need to be great at the line of scrimmage, you know. And so it's harder to defend that, you know. And we're powerful, but um, our speed is, is going to help us against these spread teams. And, you know, for us, well, our big question mark is, is you know, we go against ourselves every day. Nobody's better throwing the ball than Lancers. So we're good at defending that. The thing is, can can we stop Maul or Elder next from pounding it on us and controlling the ball and controlling the clock? If our defense can get off the field, and that's where Debo and coming in at 265, John Schwetman coming in at 245, and Jordan Thompson uh, coming in at 235, and Nate Sparks and Mike Backer is 220, and Trey Thompson and Will Backer is at 210, and the Sam Backer is Jonathan Campbell at 190 and extremely fast, and Zach Andrews in the mix there at 195 pounds. We're pretty big up front, so we like our chances, and, and we just kind of are anxious to get going and see what happens. Coach, uh, what would be your uh, overall? I mean, you like we've talked about with training camp. What's your overall feeling of how you guys have done? I mean, is it, 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 are th- things gone as planned for you guys, or are there things kind of popped up? You got the rainouts, the thunderstorms. Has this been pretty much a, a stereotypical uh, training camp for uh, the Lancers? Yes, it practice it has. Um, you know, having the two rainouts was kind of unusual. You know, the thunderstorms. Uh, one of them was my bad. I I should have went ahead and had it, but you know, uh, I, I uh, listened to the weatherman and they're they they were wrong again. So <laughs> I won't I won't make that mistake again. But it's been typical, you know. I think our defense is is ahead of our offense. And now you talked about that. Before, that I was just going to ask you: is that uh, is that not uncommon when you're talking about uh, preseason? No, that's pretty common. That's pretty common because to win the GCL South, you got to have a stout defense, and if you're not very strong there, you're you're you're, you're in trouble because you're going to face some some powerful offenses. I mean, every team we face has a Division One running back, Elder Mauler X, so you better be pretty good up front. And they all have line that average, you know, two fifty plus. Um, now I have. One big guy, Dave Balmer, who's a very good player. Dave will, Dave's a Division One player, but next to Dave is a 210-pound center, Joe Kemi, and next to Joe Kemi is a 210-pound guard and Sean Burns, and next to Sean Burns is a 217-pound uh, left tackle, Gage Weathorn, and then on the other side of Dave, at right tackle, is a sophomore, uh, Brandon Lester, who's 6'1", about 230, you know, and he's playing good for a sophomore. He's playing very good. For a varsity player, we'll, we you know the jury's out still. Um, there we have to wait and see. You know, Brandon's going to get a lot of reps, and you know we we feel like he's uh, the future of uh, that position, and so we're gonna we're gonna give him a chance and see what happens. Coach, uh, joining me right now on the uh, watch line, the celebrity hotline is uh, Brett Schneever, color analyst for the Lancers, and uh, Brett. Uh, this is your first time on Lancer Line this year, isn't it? You got you got Coach here. You got some questions for him. Absolutely, uh, Coach Grip. I was at practice on Wednesday, and uh, you know you were you were about three days into two days, and you said you guys are a little bit leg weary. How are you looking as far as uh, conditioning? Not necessarily conditioning, but you know just the, uh, the the spring in the legs right now going into tomorrow's action. After the weekend, I think we picked it up. I think we I think we picked it up today. So I, I think we're um, now tomorrow. Uh, is a heavy hitting day, Brett. You know we're doing this four way practice, Brett. It's a, it's a practice. It's not a scrimmage. I, I got to keep, right. keep, keep remember to tell the kids it's not a scrimmage. This is a practice. With all, they'll get a lot of hits, and it'll be physical. Um, and it'll be full speed because we're going. You know we're scrimmaging. So, um, but it, it's, it'll be it'll be a great day. You know we did this uh, four years ago. This um, at and it was a brainchild of. Of uh, 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 the coach at Withrow, Jim. Um, uh, Jim Place. Jim Place Jim, is a brainchild coach of Place. Jim Place, coach. Right. Yeah, and and uh, so we were a part of it. Northmont was part of it, and and uh, Withrow was part of it. And then next year, uh, Hamilton didn't want to be a part of it, so we picked up Mason, and they, it was held at LaSalle Stadium. 
and uh, then Mason's hosted it now. And, and Mason's hosting it, uh, Brent and Barrett, just because they have great facilities, lots of space. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought it was a great time at our place, but it was really packed in on one field, and our JVs had to go to St. James, and where the JVs and freshmen will all be at the same site tomorrow. So it'll be it'll be a great day, and um, so you know Mason's going to host it from now on. And but we we think it's one of the best days of doubles, and it really is a test for your your kids to see where you're at. And you know nobody walks away feeling they lost or won, and hopefully we all just get better. And uh, so, Brett, you uh, coach, Brett, you coached at Oak Hills, and obviously Coach Grippa, you got uh, many years of experience. I got to believe that these kids are happy to get out of two a days and to, to hit somebody other than themselves and kind of get out of the the monotonous two a day, the rigorous practices, and just kind of break the monotony a little bit and uh, you know knock some helmets around. Am I right? Yeah, we're we're, we're at the end. They know we have uh, tomorrow is just a practice, just a three hour practice, and then. And we got Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, and we're done. And Friday scrimmage, Saturday we come back, uh, lift weights, do some film study, a little bit of jogging, and then next week we're back to single practices. So they, they know the haze in the, the barn, and we're just, uh, you know, we're, we're grinding this out. Now, now we're doing uh, a little bit more teaching, and uh, you know, like today we we spent some time defending option because Winton Woods is a triple option team, and. And Middletown Friday will be a you know all triple option with a quarterback that's going to Ohio State. So we'll we'll spend some time um, getting ready for them and on th- Wednesday and Thursday. And you know we haven't gone against a 50 defense yet in uh, doubles. We've gone against a 33 and a 40. And so we'll uh, we'll spend two days Wednesday and Thursday practicing against a the 50 defense. And because it's a little bit different each, each way, you, you know each time you attack a different front. So. Um, we got a player Coach, too that will add. Coach, you kind of took the, word, the question out of my mouth. I was, I remember back years ago, and actually, I think this was in 2004. We, uh, when Coach Place was up at uh, Chaminade, um, I was out of Moore at the time, and we went up and, and did a four-way there. And one of the challenges that kind of faced us from an offensive standpoint was, you know, you're you're spending, a, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes, or whatever it is, going against three totally separate uh, defenses. And I know for us, we, we saw three totally different things. We saw an odd, we saw an even, and then we saw, I don't even know what it was. I think Sean and I was playing a 6-2. But I guess my yeah, question that's right, is, six, two. yeah, you know, how much of a challenge is that to Coach Derger's guys up front when when they're seeing all this stuff without a whole lot of time to, to adjust in between? It's tough, you know, because they wanted to, when you go against, Went in woods, they're going to run a 50 defense, and you know, the thing that helps Brent is that it's it's situational. We will start off with a, a, a individual period, and then that's 25 minutes. Then we'll go to uh, against um, Mason in a, in his first and ten plays. So we'll bring the ball back to the same spot. You know, we'll start on the 35 yard right. line. It'll be LaSalle's offense against Mason's defense. And then on the opposite end of the field, it'll be the JVs going at the same time. And it'll be JV's defense, or our defense. When we're on offense, it'll be JV defense. So that way um, we'll be able to coach both sides, you know, and and that'll help. Um, but it's first and ten plays. So, I mean, that's why I was working on a call sheet because, you know, I'm not trying to win. We're just going to go out and, you know, I've got my first and ten plays, you know, the, the you know, 10 to 15 plays that I want to see in first and 10 situation. Then we go against um, Winton Woods, and the situation is third and long. And then we go against Northmont, and the situation is red zone offense and red zone defense and goal line. And then the last situation is uh, they call it an open period, and it's just a one quarter of a scrimmage again, and we're going against Mason. And uh, so that way you do get to move the ball and – so, so that gets a little fired up. Uh, that that's kind of that was fun last year. We did that, and in 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 our quarter, we uh, we scored two touchdowns and we were really fast. You know, Keith Kastner over there at Mason, he likes to blitz, and we we burned him on two hits and goes. Uh, Brent, for touchdown. yes, he does. I can speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because I was actually we kind of we had two fumbles. Uh, and and uh, Joe Berger was a uh, part of both of them, and 
So we were kind of upset, and, and 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 they actually scored 10 points. And then we got the ball, and we go right down the field. We get to the 35-yard line. I call hitch and go, touchdown to Keith. We get a stop. They punt to us. We go right down the field again, another hitch and go to Isaiah T- Fuller for a, another touchdown. And they were blitzing us and, you, you know, throwing the kitchen sink at us. And they were leaving X one-on-one. We said, well, anytime right. we get X one-on-one, we're going to take, we're going to go there. So, you know, I don't know if they'll do that tomorrow. Uh, they're good coaches over there. So they'll probably have a, maybe rethink that. So I don't know. Yeah, but it's, it'll be fun. We're looking forward to it. Coach, I want to Coach. thank you for joining us. Uh, you've been on since 9 o'clock. I said a couple minutes, and uh, you've given us about a half hour. So uh, enjoy. But, but I got a question for Talking you. Talking football little... is hard for me to stop. Uh, well, you get you get two football nuts like you and Brett uh, talking football. We could be on until midnight. But I, I got to do – I have to ask you before I cut you loose here. Brett, stay on the line. But are you a little bit concerned uh, the liability that I have with WLSN having a guy like Brett Schneeber in the booth, I mean that's got to make you a little nervous, I would think. Am I am I accurate? No, he's a lan- he's a, he's a lancer through and through, and he's going to be up there. Maybe we might need his help, you know. <laughs> in fact, we might need him to come down tomorrow and help us. I'm going to be shorthanded. Uh, Coach Durger's actually having some impacted teeth pulled tomorrow, so he won't be there. Coach Cook will have the offensive lineman, but. Wouldn't you know, like to, I wouldn't like uh, to be his dentist. Let's I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, Coach, thanks yeah, that's a lot for right. joining us. Uh, we, okay. we really do appreciate you taking the time. And, uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Talking to you uh, all, all season long, and certainly uh, I know I'll be there. Brett, are you going to be there on Mason? Uh, I'm going to try. I'm running the kids around. I'm playing Mr. Mom tomorrow, so we'll see what I can come up with. Uh, doesn't sound, that sounds like a no to me. But, Coach, thanks a lot, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. That's, Coach, that's Coach Grip of the head coach of your LaSalle Lancers, and I'm going to be back with Brett. Schneeber. When we return, you're listening to the, the what do they call us? Where we are the leader of high school sports and high school football in Cincinnati, WLSN Radio, the worldwide leader in high school sports. Beacon Orthopedics is the official sports medicine and rehabilitation team for LaSalle High School. Dr. Bob Berger has served as our team orthopedic physician for the past several years, and we would like to take this time to thank him for his service. Beacon provides the physicians and certified athletic trainers to assist in the prevention and safety of all who participate in our athletic events. We would also like to thank certified athletic trainer Dan Forkham for providing sports medicine services for our athletes for the past six years. Back on WLSN Radio, the worldwide leader in high school sports, and I have with me my partner, color analyst for the LaSalle Lancers on radio, and at least for the first game of the year on TV, he is Brett Schneeber, and Brett, how excited are you for high school football? We're weeks away, it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, I was telling Coach, I'm not sure you heard the beginning of the interview, but uh, this past week, you could almost feel the intensity uh, towards high school football pick up. It's palpable now. It's almost go time. Yeah, it is, Barrett. I, you know, for, just speaking from my own perspective, this is my first, <laughs> this is my first summer since my adult life. Uh, I guess you could say it started in college, whatever, at, out of college. This is my first summer I have not coached football, whether at the collegiate or high school level. And for me, it's a little bit different. But what it's allowed me to do is go visit some friends' practices and kind of see how things are, are done. And when you when you do that, you kind of get your eyes open a little bit from you know how how different, you know, different coaches go about structure and practice and all that. And uh, for me, I got the opportunity to take in five different practices at four different schools last week, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, what, you've been to a couple of practices. that You were there, I think, uh, a couple of days ago watching practice. What's one thing that has stuck out in your eyes about this Lancer uh, football team? Their speed. Uh, Barrett, I <laughs> – Defensively or offensively? Uh, both. Um, I, I coached at LaSalle 99 through 2002 with uh, with Jim McQuaid, and I, I was lucky enough to spend a couple hours with Coach McQuaid a couple weeks ago, and, and he looked at me and he, he said, Brad, he says, if we would have had the type of speed um, at LaSalle that, that he has at Solon right now, he had, it's hard, or it's easy for him to say he has a defending 100-meter uh, uh, dash champion, as his tailback. So he has some real speed. And, you know, but what he was getting at was he said, if we had that kind of speed back then, 
we would have been really, really good. Well, Coach Grippa has that speed right now. I mean, I, I look at the guys he has, you know, playing receiver across the board. And, you know, Derek Keith gets a, a lot of publicity, and Derek's really good. But there's a heck of a, a supporting cast around him with Fuller and Tolkien, and then, you know, you got guys coming out of the backfield, and then you throw Brad Burkhardt in there at quarterback. That's a total different dimension than I think, that, you know, than what, what LaSalle has had in the past. Now, obviously, you know, people are probably thinking I'm crazy. You know, they got a, a third-round draft choice in Devere Posey. Well, he was one guy, you know. But when you, you look at it, they, they have guys at all of the offensive skill positions. And then you go over to defense and what they've got in the secondary. I mean, you know, Coach Griffin was just talking about defense and how you have to be really good in defense. He took his starting safety, Brad Burkhart, and moved him to quarterback because he was, he was you know, confident in – the surrounding skill that he has. And it's to me, it's just going to be really, really interesting to see, you know, when he turns these guys loose on Lakota West in the opening game. And even before that, because Middletown, you know, Middletown might be one of the fastest teams in the state. And they, you know, LaSalle owes one to, to Centerville after they struggled in the scrimmage last year. So they, they, the first three, you know, contests are going to be, you know, when you talk about real scrimmages and real games, those are going to be real, real good tests for them. Well, you, you, yeah, I'm not sure you caught the uh, the beginning of that interview with Coach Grippa, but uh, not only do they face Middletown, you mentioned the uh, uh, the quickness that they have. Of course, the quarterback going to Ohio State, but uh, you talk about a team like Winton Woods as well. I mean, you, they're going to be well tested, as you said, uh, and, and how much that speed will benefit them. Certainly, how concerned are you with the offensive line? Not by the lack of talent, but certainly by the lack of size uh, for this uh, this football team. Well. You know, when you look at them, they're not going to turn any eyes when they get off the bus. That's for sure. But the one thing that I really liked when I was at practice last week, Coach Derger and Coach Heidorn were working really hard at developing depth. And what I mean by that is your, your typical defensive players, uh, Jordan Thompson, uh, John Schwetman, those guys who are typical, typically defensive starters, they were working, uh, learning the offensive side of the ball. So basically what's going to happen, and and it's tough in the GCL, it really is, to try to play guys both ways. But what they are doing is they're really developing depth um, so that, you know, it might be, you know, four guys sharing two spots on the offensive line where where you can roll some guys through there. And you, you have to get your best players on the field. And if you don't have five true offensive linemen across the board, you got to take some of those, those stalwarts over on defense and move them over to offense and have them play a series here and there and, and you know, take some reps. And that's how you get your best players on the field. But, yeah, you know, as far as me being concerned, yeah, you're a little bit concerned because you don't have true depth and, and true established starters. But I think what they've also done, um, just watching what they've done schematically, you know, what Coach Grip has done with, with Burkhardt at quarterback and some of the different play action stuff and sprint out to, to allow him – I, I to do what he does, I think that's really going to help them so they don't have to sit back there in a pocket and protect for three, four seconds at a time. You kind of brought up an interesting question. I, I, I talked, I'm not sure you listened to the Jaleel interview. I asked him this question, Jaleel Heitch, uh, going to the defensive side of the ball. Schematically speaking, do offenses, do you, how are they going to adjust to the team speed that LaSalle has? They're going to, you know, you go away from Jaleel, then you got DJ Kristen there. I mean, it, there's speed all over the defense. How will an offense, be it Moeller, X, Elder, uh, Bishop Watterson, whomever, how perhaps might they adjust schematically against a very quick defense? Run the ball? Um, yeah, I think that's, that's one of the things that I know. And, and I hate to talk about the old days, but when Ben Martin was was uh, playing linebacker and defensive end for LaSalle, and I was coaching for a team that wore blue and gold, um, we went right at Ben. And that was the way we attacked him because he was such a good player and he was so fast. We knew that he could chase things down from the backside. So we decided to run right at him. And I think that's, that's how they, you know, I, I think that's how, teams are going to, to try to line up and, and attack LaSalle. But then all of a sudden, I mean, they've got some beef up front and, and guys that are tough to block with, with Schwetman and, and Thompson and, and those guys up there. Now, as far as Jaleel goes, the speed that he presents on the outside and his coverage ability, if I'm a coach, um, you know, sitting in another school watching film, 
I'm basically going to walk up to the whiteboard and draw a big X at my outside receiver wherever Jaleel's going to line up. He's that good. That he, I, I believe, and I know he did it last year, watching him and, and, and coaching against him and all that. He covers guys so well, and he has such good track speed, and, and he's physical too. I'll give him that. You know, for a guy who's who's got two pencil or you know two legs that are built like pencils, he can run and he's physical. So I, I think teams are going to shy away from Jaleel's side, and they're going to you know without going to have to be ready to be attacked on the opposite side of the field. Okay. And one other question uh, that 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 begs the uh, an answer from you is you're going to go to the other side of the field. It's just as dangerous with the, you know, DJ Kristen that we mentioned uh, over there, a guy, you got uh, Lemuel wire. I mean, it, it's just like, pick your poison. I think that that's going to dictate a lot of offenses. It's going to play into the hand of a, of a team like Moeller, I think, who uh, w- with their running back situation and their big offensive line, you know, plays well into their hand, but other teams, they're going to be forced to run the football, I think. Yeah, that, that's right. And that's what it's going to come down to. You know, I was, you know, watching these guys practice the, the three, four times I've been up there and just watching them break on the ball and cover people. I mean, they, it, it's it's one thing to have guys who are fast who can drop into coverage, but they actually cover bodies as they're running around through the secondary. I mean, when the ball is in the air, there there are red and white helmets on the ball right now. So if that's the case, you know, with, with, with playing that 3-3 that three, three defense that they do and having that extra defensive back, you know, LaSalle's going to have to make a decision. You know, uh, Coach Lou Griffin is going to have to make a decision how many guys he's going to commit to the box to be able to stop the run because, you know, you, you start looking at – and it's, it's exactly what you said about Moore. I mean, they've they've got a tailback who's committed to Northwestern. They've got a tight end who's going to Indiana. They've got a offensive tackle who's going to Miami. And I'm talking about the one in Coral Gables, not the one in Oxford. I mean, they got guys who can easy, really – Easy, 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 easy. Hey, I'm just saying there's there's a big difference, and and they hate when they say Miami of Ohio. It's Miami University, and people sometimes get you know a little bit confused about which Miami we're talking about. We're talking about the one down south. So anyway, you know, Mowers they're going to run the ball. I mean, that's that's what they want. I got to be careful. You ever ever hold on? I got to let's backtrack a little bit. I have to be your producer editor because ever since we left Moeller during the basketball season, I've been instructed by the hierarchies of WLSN radio that I, we don't have a six second delay. So I got to be real I got to be real tight on you. If you know what I mean? Anybody that listened to that broadcast, they know exactly what I mean. Oh yeah. I didn't say anything <laughs> wrong. I just said that the offensive lineman's going to Miami in Coral Gables down South. We're talking South beach, not exactly. Uh, there is no, there is no Miami. In, as far as I'm concerned, there is no Miami in Florida. Unless you want to start talking about the criminal justice system, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I thought that's where you were going with, uh, Thank you. you know, two live crew <laughs> and all those other guys, Shapiro or whatever his name is. You aren't part of that ring, are you? you uh, taking, not my, my kids say you've taken a lot of vacations this year. They want I, to know I, what I, you're doing. I have. Well, I got to get that suntan. I got to look like Marty Brenneman when we go on the air. You get Mike Nye's got that camera out, and then you throw in Mary Hoffman, and how about Jake Murray, our newest photographer? I got to, I got to, I got to get that tan working. Let's fast hey, I gotta give Jake, I gotta give Jake Murray some props. Those pictures that, that went up on Facebook today, that's a little bit more high quality than what you and I take with our iPhones. Would you agree? He's uh you know, you got Mary Hoffman and every all the great stuff she does. Now Jake Murray, Jake is also uh he does a lot of uh photo work with the University of Cincinnati Athletic Department. He's He's trying to get on there in a paid position, so he's a LaSalle grad. We're very blessed to have him, and uh, we're going to be teaming up with one of his buddies to do some more graphics. So, you know, we, we are we are movers and shakers here, and it's the alumni of LaSalle. Slowly, little by little, guys are checking back in, and they're finding out this place isn't a place that uh, isn't the same place when we were here. This is uh, this is pretty cool. And uh, Jake's yeah, one of those not, guys that they're not sitting he, on their hands. That's for sure. Absolutely not. Jake's bought into it, and he's really enjoying it. And uh, he's only been with us a couple of days officially, but he's got all kinds of ideas from a photography standpoint. Uh, another neat thing is uh, our iPhone Android app will be getting an update in the next week or two, and I'm told that you'll be able to see some of his photos uh, on the your Android or iPhone, whichever uh, phone you have. So. Uh, Jake's. Uh, it's great to have him on board. He takes some great photos. You check his website out, and you'll see. Uh, you know, you'll see a lot of his photos. Now, now his photos are going to be will be for purchase. I will say that. However, uh, he will be donating a portion of the proceeds back to LaSalle High School. So that's very important. So check you know check it out. 
You can go to LaSalleNetwork.net, check the uh, broadcast profile page, and you can check all about Jake and his uh, his website. But back to football, let's fast forward one last time, and uh, and I'll let you go for the night. Uh, preview Lakota East, if you could. And uh, uh, this is a football team in Lakota East that uh, well, you can't, well. or excuse me, Lakota West. You can't look past them. No, you can't. Um, a good friend of mine uh, is, is out there coaching uh, defensive line now. He coached with me at Oak Hills for six years, Bob Mullins. Um, and then just a quick note about Bob. Bob actually went to three different Lakota high schools. And people are saying, well, they've only got two of them. Well, how about this? He started out when it was Lakota, regular old Lakota high school. Then when the district split, he started out at the Lakota East School, and then he went there, and then he ended up transferring and graduated from Lakota West. And now he's back coaching his alma mater. And talking to him, he he says they have talent coming out out their ear holes out there. And and I know after competing against them last year, I think it was week five, um, they have they have athletes. They kind of remind me of of LaSalle. You know, same school colors, same you know athleticism on the perimeter. Um, they've they've got a blue chip offensive lineman and a kid named Kyle Meadows and and Bob told let me. That, let me you stop know, you right there because the average yep. lay person that's listening to this broadcast, you hear that word, that phrase, blue chip, thrown around. Explain what that is. Well, I think, and I don't even know where it comes from, but I I think it probably goes back to late seventies, early eighties. It was some of that, uh, you know, and, and it was before you had all of the, the four stars and five stars by scout and rivals and all these recruiting services that are out there now, I think when a player was referred to as a blue chipper, you know, if, if Bo Schembechler referred to him or Woody Hayes or, or Earl Bruce or whoever it was back in the day, that basically meant he was a can't-miss prospect. Um, you know, and, and, and Kyle Meadows is, a, is an offensive lineman for, uh, for Lakota West. He has uh, probably – he's getting close to 20 different offers right now. Um, I, the, the word coming out of the coach's office out of Lakota, out of Lakota West is that if if he was – if they were a betting <laughs> – if they were betting, then that's illegal in high school, but if they were to bet, they were, they think he's going to end up at West Virginia. Um, that, that's where he's leaning right now. With them moving into the SEC, you know, he, he's that type of player. I mean, he's a big, long, rangy cat who can really run, and he's got a big frame – that you know he's going to be three twenty three thirty before it's over, and he's just a uh, he's a very good athlete for those guys. Well, Brett, it's going to be a lot of fun as we uh, get set for some high school football. We got a busy week this week. Uh, you're going to be involved with the uh, John Bossy event on Friday night at Hobner Field, and uh, I am excited potentially. Now, I'll let people know now this isn't uh, etched in stone. I am hoping to hear something from Jack Brennan with the Cincinnati Bengals tomorrow. I am hoping to get some uh, credentials to. Uh, to interview Julian Posey, D back with the Jets, who's going to be coming to town to play the Bungles uh, at uh, at Paul Brown Stadium easy, on Friday. Easy. Well, I'm not, easy don't now. get me started now because I know there's probably not a lot of people listening to our broadcast, and I can get away a little more. But uh, hopefully, I'll be uh, inter- meeting uh, Julian Posey with the J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets on Friday. And uh, we'll be fair, able to get. Fair. Hold on! Don't interview. don't try to fool us. We know the only reason you want to do it is because you want to see Tim Tebow in the locker room. That that's. Uh, I was. Come I, on, we got I, you figured out. Given, you want to you want to go and see Tim Tebow. I was given explicit instructions not to seek anyone else to interview, with the exception of Julian Posey. So even if that was accurate, uh, it's not going to be possible. It won't happen. But uh, he may seek me out. I mean, you never know. He's you know WLSN is is far reaching. And 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 in the United States, certainly up in New York and the Northeast, and uh, he may he may think I'm you. I mean, you never know. So that is possible. Well it, it, it is possible, but uh, we shall see. But uh, certainly, I'll update it uh, on WLS and Twitter. And that reminds me, if you want to follow Brett Schneeber all season long, certainly with the contacts he has throughout uh, Greater Cincinnati and beyond in the high school football ranks, you can follow him on Twitter. It's uh, Brett underscore Schneeber. Brett with one T underscore Schneeber. You can also follow me, Barrett. I don't have all the insightful football knowledge you have outside of LaSalle, but you can follow me, Barrett, two R's, two T's underscore Cohen. And uh, you can also follow WLSN Radio on Twitter as well. Facebook, as we like to say, it's bigger than Texas. We follow the Lancers pillar to post. Do you have any questions for me, Brett, before we depart? I just, you know, I, I pretty much already covered. Oh, I do have a question for you. Have you gotten rid of your goatee yet? Yes. Well, I'm not allowed to have it at work. 
So if it was up okay. to me, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get the, 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 the big wigs down in the county to okay. I'm not sure why anybody would go into a 911 center and care about their operator having a goatee. If you quit breathing, do you care what the guy's wearing on his face? Negative. Not really. Not really. Hey. I, I just want I want good advice. I, you know what you were starting to look like when you when you sent me a picture of your goatee that you were very proud of. You were starting like, to look like one of those guys on the what, what's that show American Gypsies or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of what you're. I thought maybe you were doing a live um, remote or a live uh, audition or something for American Gypsies the way you've been traveling. Would, that would be certainly a neat. I'd have to look into that gig. That that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, Brett, thanks for joining us tonight. I know uh, Keen had some uh, events tonight, and you were uh, late getting on board, but uh, better late than never. You always bring some insightful information when it comes to high school football. Thanks for joining us, and uh, looking forward to a fun season. Absolutely, man. It's going to be a good one. Let's get it on. All right, it's Brett Schneever, and uh, I want to thank Coach Grip as well for joining us on WLSN Radio. It was a lot of fun, and certainly uh, we're going to have all the coverage all season long right here on the home of the Lancers and the worldwide leader in high school sports, it's WLSN Radio. It may not require a textbook, but it's filled with valuable lessons. It may not take place in a classroom, but it's an ideal environment for learning. It may not involve a diploma, but it can help prepare Ohio's young people for life. It's high school sports. High school sports can play a critical role in a student's overall education. In fact, studies show that students that participate in high school sports are more likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in their academic lives. If you think high school sports are only about competition, think again. Better yet, think about attending a high school sporting event in your community. You'll be amazed by what you see. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association and the Ohio Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association 